Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Math 100. This time, we are going to study section 1.3. Uh, it, it's a big, solid section on logic and propositions. Okay, so uh, let's write. Uh, let's dive right into it. Uh, it may be a little challenging section, but it's worth it. Okay, and it's going to lay a good foundation for the uh, what is to come uh, in this course. All right, let me share my screen and we will get going. Okay, so section 1.3, uh, we will be uh, calling this conjunctions or conjunction, disjunction, conditionals, and other things, right, etc. cetera. Now, a uh, little disclaimer here before we go any further. Section 1.3 is actually called truth tables in the book, okay? But we will not actually construct many formal tables in this class, uh, maybe just one or two, just so you know what a truth table looks like. Uh, we will uh, focus our attention more on things like the uh, when are conditionals true, how do you find the inverse, converse, and the contrapositive, and so on. Okay, so we will not be covering the entire section 1.3, but we will pick and choose what is the most important um, from these topics in section 1.3. Okay, so with that, let's go to the introduction. We now combine two or more propositions. Remember, we talked about propositions, a proposition or a, a statement, uh, logically speaking, is a complete and declarative sentence that is either true or false, right? Now we can combine two or more of these using connectives, right? And uh, we call this binary operations. For instance, addition is a binary operation we can define on numbers, right? You can add two numbers, you can subtract a number from another, you can add or multiply a number to some other number. That uh, means that multiplication is also a binary operation. Binary just means two things put together uh, to come up with a unique solution. Okay, so uh, in the world of uh, symbolic logic, we have these connectives or uh, operations called conjunction, disjunction, and negation. All right, so let me go ahead and write down the symbols first, and then we will uh, uh, we will uh, talk more about uh, the meaning of this. Okay, so the first thing, conjunction. What is conjunction? Conjunction is a fancy uh, word for a connective. Uh, using and, okay, so A and B, we denote this A and then uh, upside down V means and B, okay. This junction is the uh, connection or operation using the word or. And so this is denoted with A and then a small V shaped symbol meaning or and B. Negation, we already did this, a negation using a wavy line is this. So a negation of A or not A is written this way. Okay, now of course the question is when are these statements true? You know, do A and B both have to be true in order for these to be true? Okay, these are the questions that we will be answering. All right, so first, when is a conjunction true? When you say A and B, of course it makes sense for both of these to, to have to be true, right? If you say, look, uh, if you are a student and if you are an athlete, you can get a discount or something, okay? Then you have to be both a student and an athlete in order to get a discount, All right? So A and B is true when both A and B are true. Makes sense, right? We covered something similar to that last time, okay? Um, this junction, on the other hand, requires only one of these things, uh, at least one of them to be true. So A or B is true when either A or B or both is true, okay? So if at least one of them is true, then the disjunction A or B is considered a true statement. The negation of A is true only when A is true false, right? Because the negation will automatically, by definition, will have the truth value that is opposite of the truth value of A. Okay, now the conditional, this is the probably the uh, maybe the most confusing one. If A, then B, okay? If A, then B. We denote this 
we didn't do this last time, but if A, then B, A implies B. We use an arrow um, as a symbol for if then statements. Okay, conditional statement is uh, denoted with A, arrow B. We can read this if A, then B. You can also read this as A implies B. Some people call it, uh, let's say A is sufficient for B. You can also say B is necessary for A. There are lots of different ways of saying this because it's such a, an integral part of um, uh, mathematical statements, okay? So basically almost every mathematical theorem can be stated in terms of a conditional. Uh, so this is false when, and this is a little tricky, okay? So let me go ahead and write this down. You can go ahead and fill in this blank and then I'll explain this later. A implies B, or if A then B is false, only when A is true and B is false. Okay, let me explain uh, this a little further because this is very important and it is perhaps confusing. Okay, I'll come back to this. Uh, let me go ahead and, and um, uh, right, like I said, we will come back to this later, right? Okay, uh, let's do some examples here. Let P be the statement, he lives in Phoenix, okay? Q, remember P, it's easy to remember P is from Phoenix. Q is for Quebec, all right? So P means he lives in Phoenix and Q means she lives in Quebec. All right, let's translate each of the following symbols, okay? What does this first one say? Okay, upside down V, that's P and Q, right? So what is the English translation of this combined statement? Remember, we have just combined two statements to make into one statement, right? So this is the combination by the conjunction, um, by, by the operation called conjunction using the word and. So the English translation would be simply he, lives in Phoenix and she lives in Quebec. I'm a grammar fanatic. I have to have a comma here to stop this from a run on sentence. Okay, so he lives in Phoenix and she lives in Quebec. Okay, so that is uh, uh, what P and Q means. What's this next one? Negation of P, that means not P. How do you negate that statement P? He lives not in Phoenix is what an, an, uh, the uh, old version of English would say, but today he, you would say he does not live in Phoenix. That would be the negation of P. All right, next one, maybe slightly more complicated, P or the negation of Q. So the negation happens with Q and it's combined with P by the use of the conjunction uh, I mean, by the use of a, a disjunction, right, or, okay? So P or not Q, the translation, he lives in Phoenix, oops, Phoenix, or she does not live in Quebec, right? That's how you combine uh, these two statements using or. Now, next one, the next one is P implies Q. If P, then Q. What does that say? If he lives in Phoenix, then she lives in Quebec. Okay. Anytime you run a, write a statement, uh, which is a conditional, uh, it's best if you start the whole thing with the word if. Okay. In other words, bring this. Um, what this first part is called the. Uh, you know this. Okay. Go ahead. This first part is technically grammatically called the uh, subordinate clause, okay, um, giving the conditional. If he lives in Phoenix, this is a subordinate uh, clause and that should start the sentence. Okay, now in real life, in English, you could also say, she lives in Quebec if he lives in Phoenix. It's the same thing, right? You can switch the order of these two clauses. But what I'm saying is when you study logic, don't do that because it could be very confusing, right? So any conditional should start with the word if. If he lives in Phoenix, then she lives in Quebec. All right, and then the last one says the negation of P and Q. So 
whatever P and Q is, it's not true. So this one says it's not true that um, he lives in Phoenix and she lives in Quebec. Now we will try to do this later because right now it's not as 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 clear or as simple, right? And so later, later on in this section, I believe we will learn that this is equivalent to saying uh, either he does not live in Phoenix or she does not live in Quebec. One of these things have to be true in order to say that it is not true that he lives in Phoenix and she lives in Quebec, All right? This is called a uh, one of the De Morgan's laws. We will study this later. Okay, so the next one says, this is a, the reverse translation. Now they are giving us an English sentence and we are to write this in symbols. Okay, so how do I do that? Either he lives in Phoenix or he doesn't. Okay, so it's P or he doesn't or not P. Now you say, well, that's obvious, right? Yeah, it is pretty obvious because either he lives in Phoenix or he doesn't, okay? P or not P. Of course, the truth value of this, this is always going to be true, okay? And in fact, we call this a tautology because this can't be wrong, right? Either he lives there or he doesn't. So a statement which is always true is called a tautology. Uh, we don't have to worry about that, okay? If he does not live in Phoenix, that would be a negation of P. If he does not live in Phoenix, then, so you put an arrow, and then she does not live in Quebec, the negation of Q. Right, so that's the translation of, if he does not live in Phoenix, then she does not live in Quebec. I hope this is clear, okay? And uh, the nice thing about symbolic logic is, you know, symbols make things much simpler. Okay, so in English, of course, this is a long sentence, but symbolically speaking, this is what you can write to uh, denote the entire English sentence that you see there. All right, uh, the very bottom of page one says, well, four cases for a conditional. So what are the four cases for the conditional that we are talking about? Okay, so this is where I'm going to draw a um, truth table. So follow along. Okay, the four cases involved with a conditional, if A, then B is as follows, okay? And for a good concrete example, I want you to think of this statement. If you live in New York, living in New York is A, then you live in the United States. That part is considered a B, okay? So this means A implies B. The statement here is basically saying, if you live in New York, then you live in the US. Now you can certainly believe that because as of right now, New York is a part of the United States. All right, so you have A, B, and then A implies B. The truth table is a table that shows you uh, the logical truthfulness or the uh, truth values under all possible conditions. Now, when you have two statements like A and B, independently, A can be true or false, and B can be true or false, right? So that um, gives rise to four possibilities, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false, okay? Uh, this is just like flipping a coin twice or flipping two coins. You know, you can have heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. So there are four outcomes. And so these are the four outcomes. Each row represents the row one, row two, row three, row four. Each represents a different outcome, okay? A uh, combination of A and B. Now, imagine this, okay? Uh, a stands for living in New York and B stands for living in the US. The first statement, the first row says, this person lives in New York and the person lives in you in the US. That's certainly possible, right? So that's no problem here. Let's go to the third one. This person here says FT. So that would be a person who does not live in New York and he still lives in the US. Is that possible? Can you think of anybody who does not live in New York but lives in the US? You probably can. In fact, you are probably one of those people because 
the chances are you do not live in New York, but you live in the United States. So that would be a true statement. Okay. Now, the last one, false, false, is somebody who does not live in New York and does not live in the US. Can you think of anybody like that? Sure, anybody who does uh, not live in the United States certainly does not live in New York. So this is true. The only impossible thing, the only impossible uh, case in this case is, in this situation is that one, row number two. When somebody lives in New York and does not live in US, see that is an impossibility, right? So A implies B would be false. If you can find a single person who lives in New York, who does not live in the US, you have proven this statement false, okay? So this is a very, very important thing here, okay? I'm going to uh, summarize each line here in just a few seconds, all right? But what's really important is the implication or conditional A implies B is false only if A is true and b is false in other word uh, another way of saying this is that an implication is false only when the um, antecedent is true and the consequent is false and this example living in, in new york and living in the us gives you a very clear way to remember this pattern okay let me go ahead and summarize these four lines or the four rows that we have just stated. Okay, so the first line, TT, represents um, someone who is like, uh, you, oops, you live in New York and you live in the United States. Okay, so no problem, right? There are a lot of people who live in New York and um, these people live in the United States. Okay, the second line with the impossible line, you live in New York, but do not live in the United States. Okay, so you can not possibly find anybody like that. So that's what makes the second row false. Now the third row, it's quite possible for you to, you not live in New York, live in the United States, okay? You may be living in California, for instance, or in any of the 49 states, except for New York. The last one, false, false. This is a person who do not live in New York and not live in the United States. Somebody who lives in uh, England, for instance, fits in this category. So the point is you can find somebody in number one, number three and number four, but not in number two. Okay, so that's what makes that a false category. All right, what you have seen is a uh, truth value or the truth table for A implies B or if A then B. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and stop for a moment, take a little break. And then when we come back, we do page two.